Okay, so hand and wrist. So we're going to get the pre wrap on. Again, we just want to make sure we get it on. Just no big wrinkles. Okay. You don't even have to use pre wrap if you don't like to. Personal preference. Alright, so when we do hand and wrist, same thing as curved toe. We don't want to get too close here because we're not going to have any room to work with, but we also don't want to be like way back here and cover his tattoo. So I usually go about five, six inches back from the thumb. Okay, so we're going to do two anchors. Two anchors there. And then we're going to do one anchor through the palm. So this one's kind of going to go at a little bit of an angle. And you're going to crank there because we don't want it to cut his web space. Okay. There's our anchor. So looks like that. So we'll pick that when it's done. Now there's two different wrist tapings we can do, and I'm going to do the same. I'm going to do them both on here. So I'll kind of try to explain it. So if we're going to prevent wrist flexion, okay, so we're preventing this motion on him. I, yeah, ow. Clayton ow. says ow. <laughs> so we want to tape on this side. We want to tape on the extensor side of his wrist. So we're going to put him in a little bit of extension. He's going to hold his hand right there. And we're going to do the fan again. A lovely, lovely fan that everyone loves. Okay. This one, it's usually easier not to measure it out and just tape directly onto him. So we go like this. Do the X and then do straight. Okay. So with this, he's going to be limited on how much he can flex. Okay? So now if we're going to prevent extension, so if we're going to prevent this motion here, we would tape on the opposite side, only we would put him in a little bit of flexion. So we do the exact opposite. Okay? So we do the X. And then just do the straight one. Now, depending on what one you were trying to prevent, you don't have to do both. I'm just showing you both on the same one, so we don't have to do it twice. Okay, so preventing extension, we tape on the flexor side. For preventing flexion, we tape on the extensor side. Okay, now the steps from here are the exact same for either one. So we've got our X's. Now what we're going to do, I'm going to put a little bit of closure on here just to make sure these ends don't come up. Okay, so just making sure those don't come up. So now what's next is we're going to do two figure eights. Okay, so going to turn his hand over. Okay. So what I usually tell people to do, the figure eight is going to be helpful in covering this, the wrist joint itself. So we're going to cover right here. So I use the radius and ulna as my landmarks, and I go at an angle. So I usually start by going towards the pinky, towards the pinky side, because I won't have the thumb to worry about. So I go towards the pinky, and then I'm going to come, turn hand, there you go. So we're going to come through the hand. <laughs> Coach Price. So we're going to come through the hand. It's going to go over the top and down and back through the wrist. Okay. So now we'll do one the other way. <laughs> so now we're going to go towards the thumb side. So we'll start on the ulna side. So we start here. We go over the top. And this is why I usually like to go towards the towards the pinky side first because I don't have that thumb to worry about. I don't have to crinkle anything. It's all good. So we go towards the thumb. Go back through the hand. Right there. So then we come across. Across the top of the hand. And then we're right there. Okay. So if I was going like I did with the ankle, we're going to show it with the free wrap. Okay. So we start here, go towards the pinky. Oh, almost lost it. That would have been bad. There. So we've gone. So we went across, under the hand, across the hand, straight across, and then back. Okay. So I know it's a little complicated on the hand because there's not very much room, but that's how the figure eight looks. Okay, then all we do is we close this up and make it look nice and pretty. Alright, so that is hand and wrist. Okay, now if we're going to add thumb spikers to this, here's what we do. The thumb spike is designed to prevent hyperextension. 
of this joint, of this PIP joint in the thumb. So for linemen, for volleyball players, for anyone who's had a sprain of this joint, this is what we're trying to prevent. Okay, so we're going to use our half strip again. We're going to use this, this half strip. Whoop, that was a full strip. Half strip. So I'll use this shortened, shortened piece. Hey, Palmer. So what we're going to do, okay, we're going to do four of these. We're going to do two dorsal, two Palmer. That's what I do. So I tear it off. Shrink it down just at the end. And we want to be really careful to cover just this joint. We don't want to cover up here because then we're going to have freedom at that joint, okay? So he's going to put his thumb up, help me out just a little bit. We go there. So these are going to be dorsal ones. The one you put down first, so if we put the dorsal side down, so we put the top one down, that's a dorsal. So we go down. So see how I crossed right over that joint? That's what we're looking for. Okay? So Lauren did such a great job moving. We're going to come over here, do the same thing. So here is a dorsal spica. Then we come across. Okay. So now we'll do a palmer one. The same thing. You try it. Whoops. Palmer. Palmer side. Okay. Then we finish on the dorsal side. Same thing. Go to the Palmer side. And if these ends are long, it's okay. Just tuck them around the back. Not even a big deal. Okay, you're probably going to have a hole there. Not a big deal. And then all you do is tack those ends down. Put a couple closures on. Good to go. Check for circulation, and you're done.